weighing in at nine stone, 13 and a half pounds. The world champion fighting out of the blue corner and wearing the black shorts. He brings with him a record of 35 wins from 37 contests and is making the second defense of his world title. Ladies and gentlemen, from Paris, France, please welcome the WBA light welterweight champion of the world, Suleiman Umbe. Your steward in charge is Mr. John Maurice, QC of Wales, and your timekeeper at the bell is David Walters. The referee will now give his final instructions to both boxers. You both are the rules, I want a good clean fight, shake hands, good luck to you both. Yeah. Referee, Ladies and a gentlemen, very, very experienced man. Stanley Chris Tadulu of South Africa is the referee for this one. We have 12 three minute rounds. Solomon and Bai, you can see, has all the physical advantages against little Gavin Rees. And small champions in the past, though, remember baby Jake Matlala, he could fight a bit. Can Reese find a way somehow to negate this enormous reach advantage that Mbai has? Well, obviously, he cannot stand off Mbai, but he's got to be careful as he starts to make his advance that he doesn't get counter punched. By his own admission, he's had an indisciplined sort of life as Gavin Reese, but he's not actually lost since losing in, I think, the uh, against an Irish amateur some 11, 12 years ago. So he's got that belief of a man who's never tasted defeat as a professional, and he started brightly here. They show absolutely no nerves or any respect for the champion. Good body shots. Spars regularly with Bradley Price, who stands taller than uh, Suleiman Mbai. Bradley, who's at ringside watching the Commonwealth light middleweight champion. Really going to work with solid body shots. You can hear them clunking home into the ribcage of Mbai. Mbai yet to establish the jab or any kind of ascendancy on this fight. Just allowing Reese to, to dictate. Just allowing Reese to fight his own kind of fight. Right or wrong, we're about to find out. And by having to punch down, he said this is the smallest fighter that he's ever faced as a professional. Can be, can be difficult. Absolutely. You know, finding a small object, a smaller target, it's obviously harder to punch down than it is up. Reese doing a good job here, working the body, bringing in hooks. Really good, bright opening from Gavin Reese. Lost his uh, license for a year for uh, an assault. Chinned somebody at a funeral, which didn't go down particularly well with the police or indeed with the British Boxing Board of Control. But he says he's matured and grown up since those days. Married nowadays with three daughters, and he's rededicated himself towards boxing. And this is his big, big opportunity. And more good body shots from Reese. This has been a really good, effective opening from the little man from Newbridge. Well, the champion just smirking, smiling to his corner as though he's got it under control. Well, he may well have it under control, but he's done virtually nothing to my way of looking at it in this opening period. The Frenchman, the champion, and this is definitely first blood for Wales and for Gavin Reese. What a good start for Gavin Rees, and he's now being spoken to by his trainer, Enzo Calzaghi. Here's the other corner, Jose Nguflu, the chief trainer for Mbai. 
Good opening for Gavin Rees. He took a little bit of a slap from Enzo Calzaghi in the corner. Enzo Calzaghi between rounds was saying to Gavin Rees, listen to what I'm saying, don't look at him in the other corner, concentrate on what I'm saying. Whacked him across the forehead and there's a little red mark from the slap. I think that was probably the hardest punch he's had so far. Well, Rees doing an excellent job of closing the champion down, keeping him on the back foot, found lots of clusters of punches, but you're, just, you're kind of waiting for the champion to burst into life. You know it's going to come. Rees has started at a really fast pace. 12-rounder, of course, championship le championship distance. There's Mbai getting in with a left hand. Well, I think that's what the Kawasaki camp of... That's how they work. They work on hard and fast punches. Reese is full of confidence. Almost beckoning Mbai in, saying, come on, make this a fight. He mustn't get overconfident. He mustn't leave himself open. And Bai knows all about going the championship distance, about going 12 rounds. For Gavin Reese, new territory. And, and he really is, sorry, Duke, he really is forcing it here, Gavin Reese. He's fighting away as though he's a, a six round fight. He says he's the best six round fighter in the world. He may well be. He's got to be the best 12 round fighter tonight, though. He's got to pace himself. Use of the elbow, says Stanley Pristaludu. Yeah, absolutely. Reese is just outworking the champion. The champion very content just to let him throw these little piston like punches. Kevin Reese does mark up. That might be a factor as well as this fight progresses. There's the jab of Mbai, who's looking to try and establish that one, try and make that a more effective weapon than it's been so far. Champion, uh, until this point, looks a little bit lacklustered, looks a little bit. Almost non-caring in there. Well, it would be easy for him to have been lulled into the sense that he's a, a class act, that he's the man who's been at a higher level. The only man who's beaten him was Vivian Harris, the American, and Harris, a, a very good fighter. And by starting to now spear the left hand a little bit more effectively than he did earlier on. Reese grinding confidence by the second. I think Mbai is having real problems punching down at Reese. He's not found his range and he's not found his timing. And those little flurries of punches might not be doing any damage to Mbai, but they're eye catching and they're probably doing enough to edge the round. Maybe the second round in the bag for the Welshman. Well, Suleiman Mbai has got problems in there. The champion has not found his range. And he's not having things at all his own way so far. He's not established his jab. No, no. C'est pas grave, c'est pas grave. C'est pas grave. C'est pas grave. Je t'ai dit la vaseline, c'est pas ça la vaseline. Ça va? Ouais. And so Calzaghi has been impressing on Gavin Reese if he sticks to his game plan that this fight can most definitely go his way. Third round. Well, he's made a, a brilliant start as Reese. Taking the fight to the champion, not being overawed at all. Taking every possible chance to land punches. He certainly took that one. And then by trying to show his strength. At least, of course, if he wins this one, well, it would be a dream come true. I don't think he's ever made any real money out of boxing, mainly because of his own, mainly because of his own problem, of his own problems outside the ring. But Duke and I have given the first couple of rounds to Gavin Reese here. 
And if he wins it, well, he really is into the big time. And even if he gives a good account of himself, we go back down to lightweight, and there could be big fights there. And Bai starting to try and bully the little Welshman around there. Oh, the champion just starting to open up now. Just trying to stamp his, his authority on the fight with the overhand right. When he does land, it's quite effective because of the longer reach. He's thudding in the hooks consistently to the body, but that right hand is starting to look a dangerous weapon for him by. The closer he can stay to the champion, the better for him. He's got short arms, so he needs to just stay close. If he really wanted to go back down to lightweight, if he doesn't win this fight, well, Gavin Reese, if Mbai might be looking for Ricky Hatton, how about Gavin Reese against Amir Khan? Well, there's a fight. It'll be a fight absolutely made in heaven. Well, let's just hope Reese can pull off a shot victory here. Well, he's fighting terrifically well. He's fighting his heart out in there. And when he gets right in Mbai's face like that, that's a good right hand from Mbai. And another one. But Reese is landing the more punches, the more scoring shots. He's outworking the champion to me again in this round. Well, obviously, you've got to take some to give some, but right now he's doing a really good job of taking those shots and coming back with his own two fisted attack. And by starting to find the target with a little more regularity. That terrifically fast start from Gavin Reese hasn't quite been maintained in the third, but it's Duke said. Still throwing more leather. How much damaging, how much damage they're doing to a natural light welterweight, though, is another question. Reese got the better of that exchange. Lombard's having problems, isn't he, Duke? He certainly is. Reese is outworking him, making himself a smaller target, using both hands on the inside. Just started to bring the uppercuts into play now. Fantastic start by the challenger. Gavin Reese, meanwhile, getting quiet words right in front of us from Enzo Calzaghi. Well, Gavin Reese has had a great start to this challenge for the title. Fought with great self belief so far. It could be as we move into this fourth round that all three have gone to the challenger, Gavin Reese. Well, we're not the judges, obviously, John, but that's the way I'm seeing the fight, and I guess you're seeing it the same way as me. You'd have thought Reese would have spent a lot of time sparring with guys like Price, who are that much bigger than him in the gym. Well, there's how Duke's seeing it. Well, he's just outworking the champion. Not all the shots are hard, but he's just outworking him. I made the reference to the little South African, baby Jake McLala, and I saw him win an awful lot of fights adopting these sort of tactics. What a fighter he was. Stood about four foot ten. Had a head like a cannonball. I just wonder if Mbai is hoping that Reese's pace is going to drop. If he thinks in the second half of the fight he's going to take over. Joe Calzaghi there on the far side of the ring saying, keep tucked up, keep your, keep your guard up. Don't let him by, get him with those long-range headshots. In and out from Reese, flurries of punches and then out of harm's way as Mbai aims to counter. Well, Reese would have spent many a round on a heavy bag doing exactly what he's doing to Mbai, throwing quick clusters of punches to build his endurance so that he doesn't tire in the second half of the fight. Many a time with those six rounders, you know, Gavin Reese barely trained before getting in the ring. Just did it 
almost literally for beer money here though he has trained long and hard because this is his terrific opportunity i was trying to think back to the last time a, a calzaghi fighter an enzo calzaghi fighter actually lost and i think you've got to go way back to bradley price you know in a meaningful fight i'm talking about championship fights but i think you've got to go way back to bradley price losing against jennings two years ago well, that's, that's pretty impressive obviously you know, they've got a gym full of full of champions now and success breeds success will they be successful tonight we kind of try and adopt French eyes, don't you, and champions' eyes to look at the scoring, but I find it hard to see how you can be giving any of these rounds so far to Suleiman Mbai. And as the rounds slip by, the gap widens. You know, he just looks to me like a guy who's on a different planet. His mind just can't be on this job because he's losing rounds and he's losing them quite big. He looks to me like a man who thought it was going to be an easy night's work. Oh, that's a decent uppercut, but it's only a single shot. Well, one shot doesn't win you the round, John. So, you know, he needs to get at the same pace as Reese to stay in the fight. Uppercut will be key, will be key for Mbai, but he's not thrown enough. What a terrific performance so far from Gavin Reese, but can he keep it up? Keep it tucked in and lose the pot. Okay? As you're doing, try to throw a little bit more, use more run out. I'm happy. Oh, get some, get some, get some, a towel, a towel, a towel, a towel. Can I have a towel so I can grow something? Go get a towel. Wants to have had big fights in the past with uh, Gavin Reese. Now, finally, at the age of 27, here it is. Frank Warren and uh, Joe Calzaghi, Paddy, for their thoughts. I would have thought that they'd be pretty pleased. Fifth round. And Reese straight away continuing. The pattern of the fight that he's employed right from word go. Look at this, he's really prepared to go right into the trenches with Mbai. Well, he's going for it, he's winging in beautiful hooks, chopping down on the right hand. If he throws the right hand like that, he's going to land with it because he's got the taller opponent in front of him. Mbai has got to find something to take Reese out of this rhythm and this pattern that he's set. Got to find uppercuts, and he's not thrown enough of them. He would expect, as, as the world champion, or at least holds a version of the world championship, he would have yet another gear to go to. Thus far, we haven't seen it. French commentators sitting right behind us, uh, sounding a little bit agitated. Sullivan sort of Mbai, who's fought in France and the UK, also in the US, Denmark, Spain. Germany, Finland, Poland have gloves, will travel. That's a solid right hand from Mbai. But back comes Reese again. Well, every now and again, Reese is going to get clipped with the right hand. But up, up until this point, the champion has shown nothing else. Stamina, though, will it be a factor? Mbai knows about going the 12 round distance. Reese has fought as though he believed that he was going to finish this one and finish it reasonably early can he possibly maintain what's been a frenetic pace for 12 rounds and even here in the fifth i get the impression that he's just trying to kid his way through a little breather well he started at a frenetic pace and in his own mind the fact that he's challenging for a world championship knows that he can't slow down if he's done his if he's done his training and put the training in which i don't doubt for one minute if he can maintain this then we're going to be looking at a new champion well, it would be an extraordinary win if Gavin Reese was going to be able to pull this one off. I had, uh, well, I won't name names, but I had a, a well-known commentator rang me this afternoon and said, well, what on earth is Gavin Reese doing in a world title fight? How on earth has he got the chance for that? Well, the proof is in the performance at the moment. He's not fighting like a man who doesn't deserve an opportunity. He's fighting just as you would expect as a challenger, not allowing the champion a minute's rest. Every time he gets in, quick three, four punches, and then a little step back. 
Okay, Showboat just a little bit with the hands down, but that's, his confidence now has gone to a whole different level. He's just trying to just take a little breather in this fifth round, Gavin Reese. He's not thrown as many punches. And he's keeping his gloves low, which I think is dangerous. Much closer round. There's a close around that one, Duke, and by... We're starting to find the target a little bit more, but he's got to throw more punches. Absolutely. Yeah, OK, I'll give the round level. Um, it's the first round load I've given level. I've given Reese everything so far. He's, he has to find range. He has to find a bit of distance between himself and Reese and start using his, his jab, which he just hasn't been able to use up until this point. Just got the feeling that Reese is starting to feel the pace in that fifth round. Right? There's no need to change at all, right? Just make sure your land band is up there. Keep working up down, right? You're a good, fantastic job. You won it. Yes, sir. You won it. Fifth round was a lot closer, but Duke McKenzie's given it again to Gavin Reese, so he is in an emphatic lead here. Sixth round. And Suleiman and Bai. On your commentator's scorecard, on Duke McKenzie's scorecard, has not won a round yet. Duke scored the last one level. There you are, a four point advantage for little Gavin Reese. What a fairy tale it would be. How much would he give for this now? Definitely allowed his work rate to drop though. I think there's a, is there a gun shield come out? No, maybe not. Something handed to the cameraman. Not sure what that was. The champion is only looking for the overhand right. He's, he's just pouring with the jab and looking for the overhand right. And it's not landing, or not to any real effect. There's no urgency behind his work. There's not enough punches coming behind his work. So I think he's losing these rounds. And he's just keeping him on the back foot. He's throwing nice little clusters, and then look, he goes out again. But the champion doesn't try to back him up and take control to reassert himself. He's just losing these rounds, because Reese will come straight back at him. Reese having some success with his own left-hand lead, which he wouldn't have anticipated. A man whose reach is um, seven or eight inches less than that of the champion. And, and the champion's also given Reese time to recover from these bursts. Obviously, he's got to take something out of him when he throws the combinations, but the champion's not working him hard enough. Good right hand that from Reese. The, the shake of the head from Mbai. He said it didn't do anything, but trust me, when a fighter does that, invariably it means that the punch has been felt and has had an impact. Reese got in with a really good solid right hand. Well, the judges would have seen it. We saw it. Reese is sort now. Reese is calling the champion in. Well, refer referee and judge, one of the best British judges, John Coyle, sitting right in front of us. And I can guarantee that if we saw that right hand, he would certainly have seen it. Reese content to go lower and lower. Getting right down to the waist level almost of Mbai. And Mbai's not winning rounds by standing there. He's got to do more. All the time he's standing off, Reese gets time to drop his hands, to regroup, take a few deep breaths, ready for his next attack. Really impressive performance so far from little Gavin Reese. And contemptuously keeping his gloves low in the closing seconds of this sixth round. Well, Gavin Reese looking really confident there, there, and he's being told by his corner he's working beautifully. Well, you've got the fabulous thing. This title is yours. All right, as you're doing, keep doing as you're doing. All right, job on. Right, okay. Keep doing as you're doing. It's about right. 
Here's some of the action from the sixth round. There's the right hand from Reese, and Bai said it didn't land. You saw that it did. You know, the champion's going to feel real sorry for himself in the morning if he lets the championship just slip away because he's, you know, had a supposedly off night. He's known about this fight for a long period of time and have had time to prepare. Every now and again, you get a, a, a fight where you just can't quite get at the races and, and make things work for you, but you would feel as a world champion, you have a lot more imagination and you look for plan B. We haven't seen that yet. Gavin Reese has been told by his corner, just keep on doing what you've done so far that the game plan is working. What an extraordinary turn-up this would be. Last week, Nicky Cook was fancied to beat Steve Luevano. He took a real beating. Don't think too many people outside Newbridge and outside South Wales thought that this was going to happen. Look at Joe Calzaghi urging his little friend on. Oh, what a swagger, what a swagger about that work. There were times when Enzo Calzaghi despaired about Gavin Reese, about his behaviour outside the ring, about his lack of dedication. Some people said, forget about him, walk away, he's not worth the effort. But Enzo would have none of it, he's been with him since he was a little lad. And he says, in a lot of ways, he's almost like another son to me. He couldn't turn his back on him, he stayed with him, encouraged him, and now Gavin Reese is producing the performance of his life. And I tell you what a performance he's been so far. Hasn't put a foot wrong. Stuck to whatever game plan he had at the beginning of the fight, and that was simply just to outwork the champion, not try and look for the knockout. You know, that was probably never going to come, but right now he's just done a fantastic job. Gavin Reese has the ring nickname The Rock. He pulls this one off. I think we maybe ought to be signing off with the Rocky theme tune because this is a phenomenal performance from Reese. Look at that. The, the thing is also, John, as the rounds go on, let's just say Reese gets to maybe eight or nine rounds, then his second wind will kick in. You can't expect his pace to get quicker because the finish line is then in sight and he can start to realise his dream of becoming world champion. He was extraordinarily confident, Gavin Reese, both at the press conference, then at the at the weigh-in, those final moments when you get telltale signs from fighters, whether or not they really fancy it. And he's almost taunting them by. He's winning another round here, Duke. I've got him winning again. That's just an absolute nightmare for the champion. He's never met anybody like Reese before. have thought about and by against Ricky Hatton At the moment it's looking like Reese <laughs> let's see what they're saying in this corner sure if your French is any good yeah I, I can speak French John they're saying to him you're seven rounds down champ simple as that He's got to do something spectacular. The fight is slipping away, and this. Do you want them? The senior eyes, you want them? All right? Okay, you call the second shot there, right? Okay, we play, boy, play the way. I don't shit. But use your jab with it. Use your jab. Apologise for the language if you're offended by any of that, but he's just trying to get Gavin Reese to stick to his boxing. Don't do anything stupid. Keep your gloves up, and as you heard him say, use your jab, box. And Bai looks a disconsolate figure. He looks very, very tired on his stool between rounds there. And there you see Gavin Reese now has got his gloves up again. None of the showboating of the last round, which got him uh, a real rollicking from uh, Enzo Calzaghi. Reese has made him look every inch. He's 32 years of age. What I can't understand is when Bai hasn't had wars, been in wars all down his career. So you start to look and say to yourself, OK, you know, why the last of performance? But you can only put it down to the opponent. He struggled a bit in his last fight, did uh, 
and Barty to be fair, but he's stopped five of his last six. And he's provenly a slick technician. Undoubtedly, as you said, John, we've seen him fight on numerous occasions. Obviously boxed a lot better than what he's boxing now. But Reese has just proven that he, he can outwork the champion and he, he deserves to be in the ring and challenging for a world championship. Needs to just maintain his lateral movement. Keep bobbing and weaving his way in and throwing those hooks which are so effective early on, does Gavin Reese, because I think he's feeling the pace now. Absolutely. So, okay, let's just say he uses this round as, as a round off where he doesn't really assert himself as he did previously. You can expect the next uh, three rounds to come after this, four rounds to come after this, but he's really going to pick up the pace again. It's like being a jockey when you're in a, in a race and you can see the finish line and you just you keep getting on the horse and you just keep pushing and pushing because you can see the finish line. It's exactly the same emotion you go through when, you, when you're in a fight. You can see the, you count down the rounds in your own mind. You count down the minutes and the seconds and you just step on the gas. Gavin Reese has clearly allowed his work rate to drop in this round, and that's a sweet right hand from Mumbai. It's only been a closer round because Reese has dropped off the pace. He's had to. Just getting a little bit wild and trying to do a bit of headhunting in there. Much quieter round. No surprise though, because it was a, a fierce, fierce pace. Eye-catching flurry of punches from Reese though, towards the end of the round, and again. Oh, and a good left hand to the jaw. That's a, the sort of punches which bring around victory. Well, Gavin Reese, what a performance so far. That's the way we're reading it anyway. Mumbai has got to have knockdowns here if he's going to hang on to his title. I've been total agreement with that. He's shown no imagination in, in this fight for me whatsoever. Just seemed totally flat from the beginning of the fight. Reese just not allowed him to settle, getting into any kind of a, a rhythm. Intelligent thinking by, by Reese. believe that this can be his night and by has got to gamble and he does as he does so and gets in close Reese is making him pay on our cards if the way Barry's scoring it and if the way Duke's scoring it if that's right if Gavin Reese stays on his feet he's won this title Bar barring the knockout I, I can't see him losing He's done everything right so far. There's not been one dominant round for me that the champions had. On my card, I've only given by one round. Back in the fifth. Very, very disappointing performance from the champion. Solid left hook from Reese. That was a, a shot which Mbai certainly felt. Absolutely. Really dug it in. A absolutely. Reese finishing the combinations now with the hook. Gavin Reese said he's used to fighting tall men. Those rounds he has in the new in the Calzaghi gym with 
Bradley Price with Nathan Cleverly with fighters of that sort of size and stature. A little mark under the left eye now of Gavin Reese, but nothing serious, I don't think. Who are you? Who are you? The Reese fans chance. Well, the champion threatening and fainting, but not doing no, no work behind. There's no substance behind what he's trying to do. He's shown himself to be an inferior infighter, certainly. Reese trying to unload the uppercuts as well as those body shots. It's precisely the shot that Mbai should be looking for. Let's take a look at the Reese corner and see what sort of words of advice he's getting for yeah, what are now three key rounds. Right? Don't you okay? You with me now? You with me now? Okay, you with me now? You with me now? You with me? All right? You with me? Yeah. Then left hand work and use your right, okay? We start yeah. doing threes and fives now. Start three back. All right, pressurize him, right? Yeah. All right, you ain't got the pressure on it. You ain't got the pressure. It's the best shot's gone. The best shot's gone, right? You're doing well, you're leading well off the left hand, right? Yeah. You're leading now, you're not working like you used to work, right? Yeah. You've got to do a set three rounds. You've got to still make sure you're doing it. Bit of success for him, by. That was a good right hand from the Frenchman, from the champion. Right. Not been too many of those, though. important three rounds of Gavin Reese's life coming up if he can maintain his composure if he can avoid getting tagged in some catastrophic way by the French champion Gavin Reese the little man from the Welsh Valleys can become a world champion this makes you wonder what the likes of our other world champions at this weight would think like in Ricky Hatton and, and uh, Junior, Junior, Witter. Junior Witter. It's a classic case of success breeding success, this. Gavin Reese has seen Joe Calzaghi, seen Enzo Macromelli and Bradley Price, and thought, yeah, I'd like a little bit of that. That has to be some kind of a record, John. We've got three British fighters. If G Gavin Reese pulls this off, quite possibly holding a version of the World Championship. Reese's work rate inevitably has dropped off from what it was earlier in the fight. And he's in unknown territory, really, as the little fella from Newbridge. And by being told off by Stanley Crystal Udu for pushing his man back. Much as frustration as anything else. Frenchman must know that this title is slipping away from him. A little bit more holding now from Reese. Obviously, the pace really starting to feel it. champion unable to capitalize on it well Reese is avoiding disaster in this tenth round and every second which ticks by on that clock it's an extraordinary story is coming closer towards potential fruition Reese is tired very tired The fact remains it's been an emphatic uh, performance by Reese up until this point. You know, and they say when you win a championship, you only get better. The best is yet to come. He's had to take one or two in this round. But still bravely finishing as the aggressor. Come on, come on, come on. 
Là, il est fatigué. Là, il est fatigué. Là, il est fatigué. Mais là, euh, oh, il est le témoin, il est le viol. Les 10, le 11. Voilà. Ah. Non, non, mais c'est si, si, si. Non. There's a huge sense of urgency about what they're saying and about what they're doing. There's work for Frank Black in that corner on the damaged die. If you guys could stop this guy, you could stop him and put your bunch of together, stop whinging a bit. Are you with me now? But give me some fire. What's the fire? We attack, attack the fire. I want some fire. You can stop this guy. Two rounds. Just trying to raise his work rate for one last big effort. Round 11, six minutes to go. Gavin Reese told by his corner there is a stoppage in the air here. You can take him out. I think the, the psychology behind that is to, to make Reese win this round. Forget about the last round. I just want him to win this round because he can come out, doesn't matter how tired he is, for the last round. That left eye badly bruised, closing a little, maybe affecting his vision. They've been working away on it, but it's starting to look a little bit of a mess. Oh, he's had to give some to take some, but he's given a lot more than he's taken. Well, he wants to have had big fights in the past. Gavin Reese twice. Kevin Lear pulled out of potential WBU fights. He wants to have fought Michael Gomez. And... Uh, got smashed up in a in a car crash did uh, Gavin and therefore had to pull out of that one and Gomez was uh, a world champion that was one which could have come his way and never did and then he lost his way and now at the age of 27 little more than four and a half minutes away from producing an amazing upset victory he's desperately tired now is Reese he's worked so hard for his victory Needs to try and pull out everything in the book if he can. And Bai, and Bai will sense that. And he's starting to zero in, to aim in on that damaged left eye. And you could almost see Joe Calzaghi as he landed with one of those straight lefts. Duke turn away. He could almost not bring himself to watch what are going to be a desperate last four minutes for Gavin Reese. How dearly he would love this fight to be ending right now. Well, Reese doing a good job of tying the champion up. Buying valuable seconds, holds on once the champion gets into, into punching range and then waits for the referee to intervene. Look, clams him round the waist, waits for the referee. Good, good goal. Well, and by might be closing the gap in these closing rounds, but it might be too little and too late. Champion just trying to step back to measure his for the right hand. Reese doesn't fancy being measured, does he? And it's uh, Mbai who gets told off by the referee for holding and throwing his man around. Last few seconds of the 11th round. Gavin Reese is dog tired in there. And he's got his gloves low. It's almost inviting Mbai in. The 11th round is over, and Gavin Rees may well have lost that one. He could have lost the 10th as well. But he still, I think, Suleiman Mbai needs a knockout now. Absolutely. Challenge has done absolutely fantastic box to fight of his life. I believe he's three minutes away from picking up the championship. Say loud! Fucking three Bs are one! Look at that, that's the sort of motivation that makes a fighting man tick. There's Duke's scorecard, and by losing by five points, by five rounds, Enzo Calzaghi saying, give me three minutes, give me three minutes, and you can be a champion. And by needs the knockout. Three minutes to go, is Britain going to get another world champion? Is the Enzo Calzaghi Jim going to get another world champion? What a performance from little Gavin Reese.
Well, I've got everything crossed for Reese. I really have. It's been a lifetime ambition of his to become world champion. Boxed out of his skin tonight. Doesn't have too much left in the tank. Just needs to stay on his feet. Champion tries, he may just can't quite find the finishing touches to the punches. Reese will not be denied. He's getting right in the face of Mbai, not giving the taller Frenchman room to tee off those punches. And every second that he can get in that clinch and work away to the body, he comes closer to the winning line. Good work from Reese. All around the Cardiff International Arena, people are standing up, cheering on Gavin Reese. Been very spirited, very gutsy this boat from Reese. I can't, I wouldn't have thought there'd been too many people, seriously speaking, that would have really believed Reese could have pulled this one off. What a way to silence your doubters. It's been a pretty awful performance from Mbai. A fight of his pedigree really should have done more than he has. The fact of the matter is that Gavin Reese, more often than not, has made him fight his fight. The tactics have gone Reese's way. Goes to the scorecards, remember, at the final bell. If it goes as far as that, goes down to, uh, to judges Cesar Ramos, Paul Thomas and John Coyle. I think the champions left it too little too late. OK, he's having a big charge now. It's the last round, but, you know, the clock's ticking. And it's counting down. Joe Calzaghi's almost in the ring there with uh, with Gavin Reese. I remember when Nigel Benn fought against Gerald McClellan all those years ago, and there was big Frank Bruno hammering his fist on the side of the ring. And Calzaghi there is just trying to stir his younger teammate, his younger training partner, onto one last great effort in these last 40 seconds to stay out of trouble and to just survive now to the final bell and perhaps to a world title. Well, I think all that's needed from Reese here is a hop, skip and a jump to victory. Reese contemptuously putting his gloves down and a bit of showboating. I don't think that uh, Enzo Calzaghi is going to be too happy about that. But Reese wants to celebrate his moment. There's Bradley Price, the figure in the hat there. Another Welsh fighter from that gym, the Commonwealth champion. He thinks that he's got it. Joe Calzaghi thinks that he got it. And Gavin Reese celebrates. There is no doubt they think they've won the title. Sullivan Enbai has got his gloves above his head. But I think that might be a show of bravado, which is not going to be enough. That, for me, is the winner. Gavin Reese has fought the fight of his life. Absolutely extraordinary. Amazing. He's just boxed out of his skin. You know, I hate to say, but he made it look easy. The champion wasn't even in the fight. Never got any shots off. Couldn't, uh, couldn't, couldn't dictate at any point. Reese did everything that he needed to do, I think, to secure victory. Well, maybe, maybe not. We're just uh, waiting for the decision to be worked out here. Master of Ceremonies not in position yet. But uh, these are anxious, anxious moments. The Welsh fans think that Reese has won it. Reese must have been told by his corner that he's done enough. He thinks that he's got it, but in his heart, he'll just be waiting. That's always nice to see. What a terrific performance. If somebody had said to me, if somebody had said to me, where's your money going to go on this one? Well, much as I would have loved to have seen Gavin Reese win it, I couldn't in my heart have said that I thought he was going to do what he's done tonight, but he has fought quite magnificently. Joe Calzaghi in the ring now, congratulating Gavin Reese. These are still anxious moments, though, because you never know. You never know. Joe's asking us how we've got it, and we're saying, yes, as far as we're concerned, Gavin Reese is the winner, but every moment which ticks by, you wonder if it's closer. Here it is. Here's the verdict. Let's go to the Master of Ceremonies. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a unanimous decision. <laughs> Judge John Coyle scores the contest 113 to 117. Judge Paul Thomas scores the contest 112 to 117.
and judge Cesar Ramos scores the contest 110 to 118. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner and new WBO Light Welterweight Champion of the World, Gavin Reese. What a performance from Gavin Reese. A fairy tale result. A despondent Suleiman named by delirious supporters. <coughs> and Gavin Reese, the rock, has produced his own little rocky performance.